Hello everybody, Sheila Lee here with Honors Accordion Level 1. This is our first section in Session 2, so it'll be called 2A. Uh, today, I've just, just, and I'm sorry, just 10 minutes ago, uh, put up the outline for today. So go ahead and open another screen in your browser or whatever so you can follow along with this. But uh, today, we're almost going to finish up Book 1. Um, the First song I already told you, Dreaming, don't do in the book, because the song that's listed is Sleep Sleep, it's Doo Doo Litchie Mary Harrison. And so we're going to do my version of it instead of the book version. Uh, so go ahead and get your copy of that or put it up on the screen. And so it, it says Sleep Sleep, but I was trying to do the translation. It's you, you are in my dreams, you are, you, you are in my heart. <laughs> so you need that today. And yes, intermediates, you're going to need your chord chart, so get it out. And I've put up a new one, and it's called Introductions to Counter Bases. So beginners, you can do this too. It's not just for the intermediates. So go ahead and either have it ready to pull up on your screen, or go ahead and print it off. Stop, stop, stop the computer right now and go print it off and you've got it. All right. And then our two sight reading songs today. It's really going to turn into three because one of the pages ended up with a surprise song, and you'll see it when we get there. And that's, um, what are the two? Oh, where did I put them? Uh, where's my list? I got my list there. Introduction to Counter Basins. Where's my sight reading? Oh, uh, have I told you lately that I love you? And Heartbreaks by the Number. Um, heartaches by the number. Everybody tells me I need some more country songs. So I'm going to pull some, some country songs in for our sight reading today. All right. And then there's a surprise one in there. You'll see it when you print it out or open it up. Um, did I put? Yeah, the link's up at the top to them. Okay, that's all you need for your copies. We're ready to get started. So how do we always start? We always start by getting your accordion in a good position. Get your octaves going. I'm going to tip my keyboard down so you can see it. I'm going to go for my octaves, and I'm going to put it on master. Get my hand, get my hand position going here. Then we're going to go slow because you're going to go fast. Then down. Now, add your third in now. I can't curl my fingers. There we go. I'm going to curl them out the way so you can see. I'm going to add the third tone. I just wanted to do it so you can see I'm only playing one, two, and five. So. Intermediate, you can play one, three, and five. I'm playing one, three, and five on the C major scale. I'm going to just keep it all white. So. Intermediate, just take it one more step. Roll from the bottom. Roll twice. Is that cool? Now shake it off. Woo! That's a good warm up. Now, what we're going to do is now we're going to review the three scales that we know C, F, and G, and we're going to expand them to two octaves. We were doing C, one octave, right? And remember the thing was one, two, three. And then we put the thumb under and slid the fingers. We didn't do an over, we just slid. So. Now, when we're going to go two octaves, stop at the four, take your thumb under, and pretend like you're doing it again. One, two, three. scale is third finger. At the end of the scale is fourth finger, so I'm going to take the four over. Remember, I don't like the word over. I'm going to slide it. So if I keep an even beat, I'm going to go slow because I'm going to come down twice, you know, double speed. So, or the second time twice. So nice and easy. Play with me. Ready, go. Then 
Double time. I should have stopped. <laughs> then when you get to the end, add the arpeggio. The C major chord. So let's do it on F. Now F, remember, we have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, then 1, 2, 3. So if we're going to expand it to two octaves, in fact, I'm going to start back here on this F so you can see my hand. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, B flat, take my thumb under, F, so that's one scale, then 4, so. I'm sorry, sometimes I'm repeating the top note, sometimes I'm not. Uh, probably counting wise, it works best to go ahead and repeat the top note. Now, if we're going to expand this to two measure, two, two octaves, that means the three in the middle will be, the no, the middle will be three. So I'll go one, two, three, four. Then one, two, three. Now I'm going to put my thumb right because I'm going to start F again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then three's in the middle. No, it's not either. Four is in the middle. I'm stuck. Remember, four always goes on B flat in the B flat scale. So here we go. Try again. F. Four is in the middle. Start the scale again. It's three, two, one, four, three, two, one. The flat scales are the only ones that have goofy fingering. And I say goofy, just remember, four always goes on B flat no matter where you are. Four is always on B flat. So if I'm coming down, if I'm going to cross over, four has to be on the B flat. That's how you remember it. So now let's see if we can do it together without getting in trouble. <laughs> Slow, because the second time is fast. Ready, go. Four. I didn't stop. <laughs> Alright, that was F. G. Okay, the same thing. So you can see it on the keyboard. I'll start back on this G. So G's back to the C scale fingering. One, two, three. Then one, two, three. Four's on F sharp. So let's go ahead and go for the two octaves. Ready, go. One, two, three. You notice I'm not playing legato. I'm bottoming out each note and giving a break in between each so you can get a nice feel. Now, we don't have to have a heavy feel to it. All we have to have is a detached and a full bottom out of the key. I don't want you playing on the, you're just barely depressing the keys. Now, with that said, I want to do four notes of the scale over here. So if we went C, D, E, F, that means we're going to go C, D, E, F over here. So if we go C, there's the D, there's the E, and that's way back down here. Oh, that's a pain in the neck. C, D, E, F, F. You'll never make it. So, I have a solution. Go to your intro to counter bases. So beginners, you can do this too. Go, go pull up your intro. What we're going to do, we need an E, right? C, we're, we're, we're trying to find the C, D, E, F, very comfortably. C, D, E, F. Okay, we have a C. We have an F right there. Okay, so we're going to try to find the scale notes to where they're easy. So let's do the exercise. What it is, is this C row, or the, the bass row, the second row deck here. And I've, I've not made a big deal of this. The order of these buttons, if they go in up or down, is called the circle of fifths. The distance from C to G is five notes on your keyboard. See, inclusive. One, two, three, four, five. So there's your G. Now if I go five more, it's D. That is the next bass. Now, if I start on C, 
and count backwards five is F. So F's below. If I count backwards five, there's B, well, you have to remember your flat, B flat. So that's, they, so they go, in, well, the distance from C to F is, an, is a fourth this way. It's a fifth this way. So they go up in fifths, down in fourths. But I like to just always think fifths. It's, e it's the easiest way. So now with that said, that means all these are a fifth apart. Now, to figure out this row in front, it's a third off. So if this is C, the counterbase of C is E, the third tone of the scale. So E. So C. So look at the music and see how it's written. If we look at just the left hand, it plays C chord. That is written bass clef E, and the little line under it means to play it on the counterbass roll. So I go bass. So C. That's all it is, just that simple. So bass chord, counterbass chord. And I just show putting them both hands together. That's all I'm doing. Next measures, more notes. Then I alternate. Come back to the E. Oh, I forgot to put the counter slide on that one. But you notice it's still an E. I'm making your right hand match so that you can listen for the bass. Now, some of you have had some trouble, and this is in your theory book, so I'm going to catch you on this, reading your bass clef. Most of the music I write, and it's just because of the um, the software that I write it in, I'll write C major. I, 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 it won't let me put the major, the capital M or the little M. I have to put the C with it or the F with it. So some of you have gotten a little on the lazy side of reading your basses. So I'm going to set my accordion down, and we're going to do a little trick right quick. I'm going to, see, I'll put this up. Yeah, like that, so you can see. I've got my bass clef drawn on the board here. Where'd my marker go? Who stole my marker? Uh, just a second. Here it is over here. There's my marker. In fact, let's just start here. If we do the treble clef, we've already learned. Is there a glare on that? Yeah, there's a little bit of glare. Uh, that's not going to help me. I'm going to move this. My screen is reflecting. <coughs> Hopefully you can see it. <coughs> Remember, this was E on the bottom line. G, B, D, F. That spelled every good boy does fine, right? I'll even write it there. E, G, B, D, F. The spaces were F, A, C, E. That's easy. F. A, C, E. So that was F, A, C, E. Now people get in trouble with what they call the little ledger lines, the little lines they add. And here's how I always remember it. C, one line, got cut in half. So cut in half for C. So now, if that means between C and D, C and E, that's a D. So that's how I always learn to remember the ones in between. I go by the lines. So now if I have another space down here, a line with it below it, what comes before C? B. So if you learn those in the right hand, you're cooking. Now let's finish the lines at the top up here. If I, have a, if I add a line up here, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and add two lines because I'm going to show you a trick. This top line is called F, right? In reality, we're reading the lines and spaces every other note. C, or like E, every good boy, E, G, B, C, D, we're just saying every other note. So if this is F, that means we're going to spell face again. F, A, C, see how easy that is? And the same thing here. F, A, C, E. Over here, I went E, G, B, right? So that means this sitting up here on the top is G, B. So they're just going everywhere. They just keep repeating. 
Once you get comfortable with that, we're going to translate it now to the bass clef. Now, in the bass clef, we've already learned that this is our C. All right? That's our C bass. This is our G bass. And if we only know those two, we can figure out all the rest. I'm serious. That's C. Well, over here, when we went F, A, C, E, what came before C? A. What came before A? F. So that means F, A, C, so that means this is E. Are you seeing my logic? It, does, it, it makes it so easy. Don't, don't go to get brainy over it. So we'll do the same thing here, G. Now over here, did it go E, G, B, D, F? So E, G, B, D, F. If this is F, what came after F when we did every other? A. A. So let's finish this one. F, A, C, E. That would be G. What came after G? Before B. And if we have another line over here, F, A, and there's our C that we always have as C chord. It's always up there by itself. So don't freak out. Now, the only thing we have to remember now with accordion basics is there's D is really gives us a pain. If this is C, oh, I'm sorry, that's, we'll do the B one. So we go E, G, B, wouldn't, if I drew a line and put a note above it, that would be D, right? And that's exactly what D looks like. It's got a little, a little lot ledger line when it's sitting on top. Down here on the bottom, if I went this, put one ledger line down here, that would be E, right? Because there's E, G, B, D, F. If that's E, that means one more ledger line, and D is below it there. Make my D strong so you can see. It. So that's D. So normally, in most accordion music, they do not. They write the bass down to the D. They write the D down here in the dungeon. Then they write the chord above it. So it's on, outside. They avoid, use, they avoid using this D right here. And the reason they do that, I'll do this. They avoid that D because now I can honestly say the notes above the middle line denote that you're going to play the chord. The notes below the middle line is your bass. Just that simple. So now with that said, you do have some exercises in the theory book, we'll do that in a minute, that are in the bass clef, so we'll make you read that left hand. Now, I'm going to teach you the first four notes of the C scale. We're going to play C, and it's going to look like it's a D here, but we're going to translate down to that D, then there's the, then the E, and then the F. We've already learned the E. It's across from C. You see it? Right? There's the E. Just like I have it right there on the line going through it. So turn the page. The next page, we're going to learn where the B is. Now, I don't need that for this scale, but it works in with this exercise here. <clears throat> so if I go to G, and we've done the G scale, right? And I already said it's the third note of the scale. So G, A, B. Turn my screen down again so you can see it. So G, counter bass is B. Just check, check it out. G. B. So if I play this exercise with my right hand, I'm going to go G. Can hear it? Then I, now I'm going to go. I'm going to put the alternating with it. Now I'm going to get fancy. I'm going to go in the left hand. I'm on line two on page two. I'm going to go. I'm just going twice as fast. So. Now let's 
turn that into a seventh chord. Oh wait, wait. Intermediate. This is intermediate. It's okay, intermediate. Show me seventh chord. And I'm going to now use the fourth finger to draw to go across. Then I'll alternate. So G, B, which is a counter bass. It's got the little line under it. Alternate. So G. That's it. Now I'm doing the same thing on F. The third tone of the F scale is A. A is the counter bass of F. Got it. So F, A, put in the alternate. So I'll do the last line. We're going to do that boogie bass. So. Okay, intermediates, go to seventh. Now, intermediates, we can do a swing. Which I'm going to go long, short, long, short. Now, if I put all those together, do you notice where I'm sitting right now? Intermediates. There's your C chord. So if I go, so if I hold that down, there's my C chord, and I do the C pattern that we just did. I'll use high shift. I go to my G chord and do the G seventh pattern. I'm sitting there. Go to the F chord. And do the F. Back to C. We have just done an entire boogie pattern. So, so if I put the swing to it, Isn't that cool? It is that easy. There is more to that little bass right now. I was having to hold back. <laughs> but that's the easiest, that's the easiest one. Okay, you can see the fun with those counter basses. It makes the bass it just in. I'd have to get an A if I'm on F. I'd have to go way up here to find an A. And here it is right here. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to teach you the first four notes. No, let's learn the last four notes of the G scale, of the C scale. So the last four notes would be G, A, B, C. So G, we know where G is. We just learned the A is the counter base of F. We've learned B is the counter base of G. And then C. Yes, that was the last four notes. So line them up, put your three on C, now G. Take your four across to A, two across to B, then come back to C. Or leave them lined up and move them all together. So C, oh, I'm sorry, G across, A, B. Is that one? Yeah, that one, that one, B, B, B. Bring them all back C. If I leave them down, you can't see which finger I'm moving, so I'm going to lift them out of the way. So, G, so C, oh, it starts on G, I'm sorry. G, there's the F, go across to A. Cross to the B. Now, if you do it fast, it's the Munster song. Ah. <laughs> I'm serious. Just that easy. Now, that was the last four notes of the C scale. Now, let's do the last four notes of the F scale.
which is the last four notes of the F scale is C, D, E, F. So use that exact fingering. You did, you started with two, right? Go to C and do the same thing. Line them up. Two. Take them across. Four, two, three. It's the same pattern. Starting on C this time. C. Now I'm playing D, which is the counter base of B flat. And you haven't learned that yet, but just remember it's the same pattern. C, take your four across, play your two, come back to F. So, and you can hear it. It's the last four notes of the F scale. Now, I have a reason for doing this. We're fixing to put it in Doo Doo Litz and Mary Hareton. So, if I do a waltz, it'll go C, one, two, three, and I'm going to come back to F chord. Starting on C, line them up, play your C, put them all three together, then go across four, two, and two. Okay, so put up the one I printed out, Judy Litz and Mary Harrison. The top of the page, when you print it out, it'll say, you are in my heart. Look at the very last measure on the page, right here. Very last measure on page one. There is your C. You have your two on C, and I even labeled it. I get my fingers backwards. C. There's the D as a counterbase, and there's your E as a counterbase. Yep. So it's going to go C, four, two. That's it. Otherwise, the first page is a giveaway. Now, intermediates, you can go ahead and alternate. It'll go. And intermediates, go ahead and play seventh chord. All right. We are going to sight read this. Yeah, we got two sight readings. We'll do this one legal. If we're going to do it legal, on the last line on page one, we're going to do it backwards. It shows putting your thumb on D. So if you look at the last line, put your thumb on D. Line all your fingers up. I want to play D, E, F, now A, five's on A, G. That is a B, which is below your C. Then pull your two into the C. Now, I'm sitting here with two on C. They say to put three on E. Then go under like you do a scale. Yes, so they're moving you to a new hand position. So let's do that again. Start on the D. I'm going to go D, E, F. My five is already on the A. I have to reach back for the B. Then I'll pull my hand down and my two's in C. Now I'm going to stretch for the three. Now I'm going to go E. I'm taking my thumb under to F and G. And that sets me up for page two. I'm sitting right there. So now let's go do the whole page. I think you can do it probably without even thinking. Regular hand position, your three goes on E. So I'm going to do four measures out, four measures in on my bellows. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Now in. I have a two on C. Now, line them up. I'm going to play a C with my three. Go under, play your four, two. Isn't that pretty? I need to turn my, I need to move over so you can see both my hands as I'm doing this. Okay. By the way, beginners, where it says G7, just play G major. Don't worry about the seventh chord. We'll learn that later. Okay, let's do the last line with both hands. Let me get in the middle so you can see both here. Uh, there's a good one. All right. Okay, I'm gonna do the last line. I, and, I, and for beginners, I'll 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 use the major. One, two, three. Stretch. Now put your two on C. 
I went under the wrong place. I'll do the last measure. Three. Three under. That's it. Now I'm ready for page two. Page two is going to have some... The, uh, in reality, we're now in the key of F, so we're going to have a bunch of F basses. I'm sitting in a new position with a double note. Drop my thumb back for the next note. Move my thumb back and play one and four with my G. Move my thumb back. So what's going to happen? My thumb moves every time. So I start with a F and A. Move it. Move it back. Move it back. Now where my thumb is sitting right now on E, I'm now going to move it back one more note and I'm going to do the exact run we did on page one. Well, almost. Now I'm going to do the same run again. So, that's a first ending. See the repeat bar? Since it's back to the top of the page. Now I'm not going to do the first ending this time. I'm going to the second ending. See the little two? I still move my thumb back. Now it's the same as the first page. Well, almost. I have a thumb on B, and it tells me to put my thumb on C. Yes, there are times when we have to do that, because look what it's doing. It's setting my right hand up to do... Does that look familiar? You've done it in your scale, remember? Arpeggio, third finger, fifth finger, fifth, fifth tone, and then C. Now I'm adding C bass, I'm adding the G bass with the next one, I'm adding E the counter bass to C with the next one, then I'm putting them all down. So the Indian goes, is that too cool? I love that ending. So the entire second page up to speed goes like this. Well, let, let me do the intro. I'll do the last line on page one. I cheated on the fingers. Oh, I didn't move the one. Okay, last time. Yeah. It's not as smooth, but boy, it sets you up for that chord. So nice. All right, enough on that. We've been spending a lot of time on the left hand bass, on that, on that, learning the counter bass row. I love it. All right, let's go put up your book one. All right, book one. We are going to now do Indian song. And I can say this online. When I had the book, it wasn't called Indian Song. They called it Injun Song. Somewhere along the line, they decided they needed to be correct. So, Injun Song. Now, again, I made a big deal about reading bass, your bass clef because of this song. Look at the left hand. There are no chords anywhere. They're playing just on the bass row. So, the first one, they're playing D and A. So, it goes C, G. Remember, the next one up would be, there's your D, and A's right above it. So we're playing those two together. So what they're doing is they're going for that entire first line, the entire second line. Then on the third line, they're going to go just the A, then they put them together. Then just the A, then they put them together. Is that easy enough? Now the hardest thing on this one, because of doing two bass notes, you use up a lot of bellows. So now, and look at that big curve line. You cannot change your bellows in the middle of a phrase. So we have to go out for four and in for four. Now, with that said, look at the third line. That where you do those single A's, it's going to go E, 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 E. And it goes up. Slur, let go of it. Yeah, so when you have a, two notes that are slurred together, 
hold the first one and let the other one go because it's you're through with it. So, so. Cool. Now this song also has what they call the DC all finet. We've had that in horse sense. So when we get to the end, we go back to the beginning and we end wherever the word finet is. So this has got the coolest backtrack with it. So I'm going to run this with the backtrack with you so you can hear it. Um, let me call it up here right quick. Um, Indian, Indian, Indian. There it is. And I'm going to go ahead and do what they call the fast one. All right, I think he only gives me four counts, so here we go. Okay, I had to listen to that one. So even his fast one is slow. He's got a lot of beats going. I say he, remember it's Mario Padoni. Okay, let, let me, I'm going to turn this up. I'll turn my volume up just a little bit here so you can hear it. Okay, I'm going to start it again now that I hear the beat. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I love the sound of that one. Okay, turn the page, my Bonnie. My Bonnie introduces the B flat bass. Close that window. Uh, let me close this down. Just then we learned the G, the D, the A. Now we're going the other direction. So it's F and B flat. So the first bass is F. I love B flat because you always have to label it. B flat. It goes back to F, then G, C. Now the bass changes so often in this, I'm not going to make you write in alternating. We're just going to keep it straight. The hard thing with this song is um, we're not used to, the, uh, there, there's a finger gap in here somewhere. And we'll figure out where it is. Yep, I found it. It starts out with your thumb on C. If you lay all your fingers down, they say five on A. So if you go ahead and put a gap in between C and D. So that says D. Now I'm gonna let my two just rest up there. I'm going to move it back when I need to. Now I can let the whole hand come back together if I want to. They didn't note any fingering there. Now if I keep going, I'm in that position now. Now they say to move up to D, so I'm just going to slide up. There's an next note C, so I'll be there ahead of time. Pull my hand in with it, just float in. Move the thumb. I'm just I'm just squeezing while I'm holding the note. Let my fingers flush back out. Yes. Now, they're saying we can use the clarinet shift even. So you can use one of your high shifts. They're making a big deal here about the incomplete measure. I think we've already had this once. Um, it's called a pickup note. You notice there's only one count in that first measure. So to start the song, if you've got a bunch of people you're playing together with, usually you count to three, then you go like one, two, three, then you count the two rests, you know, the two counts that are missing here. So it's like be one, two, three, one, two. 
and you come in on three. Now, what they have done, it's a rule, you can't have any incomplete measures. So since there's one count there, the other two counts are at the end. So go look at the end. It's over here on the end. Yep. Because if you're going to repeat it, there's your third count to go back. So, want to do this one with the backtracks too? Yeah. Let me get that going. My body. And I'll do the complete one. So we'll see if I can do it the first time without messing up. Uh, okay. Usually he gives me three counts, so I'm going to be ready with my thumb on C and the rest of my hand up by one note. Oops. Here we go. Okay, that's too fast. <laughs> no, that's too fast. Did you notice the bass changes a lot? You gotta watch out for that F to that G bass. There's a bad F to G bass from there. And the shift, I didn't warn you about that. See, when you have a shift in the middle of a song and it's on a rest, play the shift like it's a note. So what I'm going to do in those last two measures on page one, I'm going to clear it to start. I'll go one, two, three, one, rest. I'm going to shift on the very first rest. The other rest gives me time to find my note and get back. So I'll try it again. So it'll go one, three, one, shift, move. That's the headache. Play the shift like it. Don't, 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 don't do this. Like, no. Play it like it's a note. Yes. See what I mean? Okay, I'm going to go pick the slow version of this. I remember my mother came up to visit me in Ohio when I had my music store up there. And my students asked my mother, you know, what kind of a student was I when I was a kid? She said, oh, if I ever hear my Bonnie lies over the ocean one more time, I'm going to shoot. That seemed like I had this song for like six months because I couldn't get the shift on time. I couldn't get that, that, that gap in the notes. I, I, just, I just remember I had a middle block. and Oh, by the way, we had to memorize them before we got them okayed. So that was another thing. I think I had a middle block. So I'm going to move this down so you can see my keyboard. All right, I'm going with the slow version this time. So here we go. My Bonnie's slow. Okay, okay. If you ever start on the wrong shift, you keep going. Okay, I'm supposed to be on clarinet. Okay, here we go. turn off fast enough. You can do it. Now, I'm not going any further in the book. Nope. Uh, that'll be next week. Now, you can peek at those. In fact, uh, there, I think there's three of them. Oh, there's four. No, do I have no place like home? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, there's no place like home. We'll do it. Then we'll let it go. The big thing with no place like home is they're now inching us up one more note. What they have done is that you notice in my Bonnie, we, we were playing the A. Now they're inching us up to the B. So if I'm going to actually start on the B this time, so look for your first note in your fingers. And they're really emphasizing the rest. So it's rest, 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 rest. Now you notice my thumb is back. And the legato. Rest, rest. 
then and I get to keep this hand position. I like it. Not very smooth. Now you notice my thumb is on D right now, so I'm going to move down and stay there. Now what they're going to do is the first this measure is going to be detached. And then they're going to put me right back in that gap position. Three's on G. Then I go short and short again. Now I'm going to go smooth and I'm going to cut that A off. Because that's the end of the phrase. So. You notice I didn't have, they wanted two there, so. Because it's setting me up now for the thumb. Then. And another DC. Oh, well, I'm on master the whole time. Yeah. Okay, enough on that one. That's fun. Okay, start reading. Boy, I'm running long today. Um. Sight reading. I need to open mine. Okay, so if I come over here and I'm going to open, here it is. Go ahead and open up uh, Heartaches by the Number. <clears throat> now remember in sight reading rules, you look, there's three or four things you look at first. I'm sorry, it's kind of blurry on the edge. Okay, I'm going to open this up just a little bit so I can see a little more because I'm the same thing. I just scanned it and I haven't had a chance to print it off. Okay, what key is it in? It's got one sharp. What scale do we do that has one sharp? Key. Yeah. All right, so that means we're basically going to be playing G bass, C bass, and probably D, a little bit of D bass. G bass is our home. All right, now look for the highest note on line one. Looks like a C. Okay, what's the lowest note on line one? Ooh, it goes all the way down to B. So it's going to be C to C, an octave, plus the B. So we're going to have to set ourselves a fingering here. So it looks like the first one, it might be like based on the C scale. What do you think? Oh, sight reading we're not supposed to play, but who cares? It goes. And so on the G, and I need... A D, F, so. If I have a D, that's a big crossover if I go to the B. There's no place to go over except right there. If I have a one here, you gotta go over with that two on D on or I like that better. If you start on three and then I put these together. I like that. Now the next one will be the same thing. I just need to get high enough. And I don't like thumbs on F sharp, so I'll probably use a five. Now I got a two. Next phrase will be the same. I like the over here. Then rest. I love it. I'm going to walk it up. Then. Now, it looks like I'm going high, so while I'm holding that E, I'm going to switch my thumb. Then. Uh-oh. I better have a four. So I get my two on the air chart. Then cross over. Then I'm going to switch back. You can do all that switching if you got a long note. Yeah. I'm safe for the C. Looks like 
Looks like I'm going high again, so I'm going to switch to my thumb. Oh, I got trapped again. I don't want a thumb on that F sharp. Four on the A. Now I need three notes, and I only have two fingers left. So I'll I'll play the first one with the F sharp, and I'll switch to three. So there's nothing wrong with sitting there getting the fingering figured out so you don't get trapped. Because you saw I ended up getting trapped on the F sharp. So take a pencil, write it in. Now if we scan the left hand, it looks like it's G, C, D7, G. Then C, D7, G, C, D7, G, C. Nothing new. Now, intermediates. Chord chart. Put your pinky on G. I know I've written it in the next octave, but I, it's easier for you to see me here. So lay all your fingers down. So we're going to play. There's your G major chord. Your C chord is C, E, G. D seventh is C, F, and G. Now, if you're going to sing, Heart is by the number of left I never knew. Da -da 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 -da. Is that what we just did over in the other song? The last four notes of the scale? Yep. Da -da 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 -da. So now, beginners, we're going to sight read the whole thing now. The Q says G bass and we're in 4-4, four four, so I'm just going to alternate. Got to move over so you can see both hands good. It's straight. Okay, let's do it legit. I'll do it one time because we're running out of time. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> Traps I had to go over. I'm trapped. I'm sorry. I don't want you to see me doing that. I'm sorry, right there with that C. Yeah. I'm going to go under. down next one all right the next sight reading is have I told you lately that I love you Ooh, there's two on the page the other one is happy happy birthday baby we can do that later here we go bottom of the page what key is it in key of C okay scan the song for any goofy left hand the little cues I see a C oh my god What's a C sharp diminished seventh? I'll show you. Uh, then G seventh, C, F, C. Oh, there's that silly C sharp diminished seventh again. Oh, then there's a little F minor thrown in there. I see a C seventh sharp five. What? And then an F and a C, and there's that. C. Okay. 
I don't see any. Okay, we, we found all the goofies. So now, number one rule for beginners. If there's a chord change on count four, ignore it. Is that easy enough? Okay, for intermediates, if there's a chord change on count three and four, and you don't know what it is, play the bass name and forget the chord. So, intermediates. We'll be doing C. One, two, we'll go C. So play C. C sharp's the counter bass of A. That's the third note. Third note of the A may scale. And then G seventh alternates first. You see what I did? I went C. It's a cool pattern. C, C sharp. Then I come back on the D and I'm in position for the G seventh. I play G seventh forever and then go C. It goes to F. Then it goes back to C. And here we go again. And that's kind of an Indian. So it goes C, F. Now, it says C seventh sharp the fifth. A little bit of theory, guys. When they put in the, the reeds inside this accordion that for the seventh chord, for your seventh chord, they opted, you okay, I don't want to get too advanced to blow you away, but the C seventh chord, there's actually four notes in the C seventh chord, C, E, G, and you have the seventh tone flatted. What they did, they chose to only play these. If you listen, there is not a G in there. There is no G tone, so the fifth is not in there. So here they're saying sharp the fifth. So that means we could legally play the seventh chord because it won't clash. The fifth is not in there. So whenever you see a seventh that's got a sharp fifth, you can be confident to play the seventh like no. So beginners, you can just play major. You're fine. You're same thing. Well, no, that one's got the fifth in it. So how can we cheat that one? Okay, what is the fifth sharp? G sharp? It's an awful jump to try to find a C sharp. When we get there in a minute, let's see if we can just ignore it. Because a lot of times you can ignore it. Now if we're doing chords, we'll catch it in the chord. Okay, so I think we've got it covered. We figured out how to do the C sharp game. And it says diminished seventh. That would be the chord you're going to put with it. But we just then cheated by playing the bass solo. So now, if I just hold. Oh, wait, wait, sight reading. Yeah, this is sight reading. Okay, here we go. I'm ready to play. Now, do a quick scan. Line one, the notes are all low. Line two, the notes are all high. But it looks like I'm just C to C. So I can do I can go over and under based on my scale fingering. Okay, I think I can do it. I'm gonna go to high shift. So, so I'm gonna sit like this so you can watch my left hand. Pick up, there's the incomplete measure. So one, two. too far. Am I reading it? There it is. We can do it the right hand. What are we saying? Forget it. No bass at all. Oh, 
That's cool. Alrighty, guys. Now, I will go play the top one for you, just so you can hear what it sounds like. Then we've got to get booking. It's after nine. So it goes. Three, four. I'm sorry, reading is F natural. Okay. Follow the rule sheet. What key is it in? C. So there is no F sharp. First and last bass is C. Scan for the basses. C, G, D. <coughs> now, line two has got D minor seven. Whenever you see multiples, only play the first one. So it would be D minor. <coughs> G seventh sharp. There's that sharp game again. We'll just play G seventh. Because remember, seventh doesn't have this. Fifth in it. Anything else strange? Okay, I'm gay. All right. Here we go. I did it again. In C means no chord, so no basses. No chord. Ooh, a plus. That means augmented. So here we go again. We don't have an augmented bass. So when you don't have it, you play just the bass. And we'll grab the note here. An augmented means you're going to take the fifth tone up a half step. So listen to how it goes in there. It goes. Be flat. It is. G. I'm trying to read it. I do my chord, and there's my F, and I make it minor. <laughs> and we're out of time, guys. Well, I did not get to dizzy fingers. Uh, we'll we'll start with that next time because yes, I want you. To... Make sure you got your runs going. Let me look at my list. Make sure the assignments are done. I spent a lot of time on the counter bases, which is great. We need that. And I spent a lot of time on that first number because I wanted those bass solos because I want to start giving you songs with those little bitty walking bass solos in it. I'm going to move this over, go back so I can see. Uh, in the theory book, we're going to go ahead and do the next section. The next section is um, uh, 13, 10 through 13. Yeah. Lesson 10. Review. Yeah. So it's lesson 10. 10, 10, yeah. 10 is going over meter signature or time signature. You're counting your notes. They're doing, they're really doing a lot of counting. But it's still just quarter notes, half notes. And then they introduce you in uh, lesson 12. They introduce you to the dotted half note. They explain to you how they arrive at the count. Then, they start talking about slurs and ties. And we've just, just had that the last session, yeah. Uh, on page 20, they got ear training. And this is so good. Put in the CD that's in the back. And they're going to start having your ear training. This time it's not pitch, it's counts. How to hear the count. And it's just very simple, very easy. And then do the review on page 21. And uh, 
Those of you going for your certificate program, after you've done your page 21 in your review, check it in the back to make sure you have the right answers. Put your name on the top, scan it, and send it to me. Or put it in your Dropbox. And the same thing with you teachers. Uh, the teachers, I have a challenge for you this weekend. I did not put it on the list. I'll, I'll go at it now so I don't forget. Um, I want you to create some clapping exercises based on what they were doing right there in session two. Oh, where is it? Three. Yeah. Which one was it? Uh, yeah. Top of page 18. I want you to create something. You just have to, if you have to just take a line and you just draw them. So you don't have to have stack paper. Yeah. And if you've got finale, you can do it in finale too. Uh, create some counting rhythms in th three, four, two, four, and four, four. Uh, just four measures each. Uh, and if you have to do it to a song the kids would know, like um, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are, are. Uh, merrily we roll along, or uh, lost my partner, what'll I do? And even their eighth notes, I don't care. The name of the game is for them to start seeing where the rhythms are. And that'll help you too start thinking uh, what you can do, particularly when a student's having trouble counting, uh, what little areas you can help, help them with. And uh, using their little play thing, you could even record the songs and have them clap. So start making notes to yourself what you can do to help the student if they're having trouble counting. Otherwise, guys, we have finished the A section of two. Next week, we're going to do B, and I'm going to try to finish up this session. This, this, yeah, this, this level one session two, I'm trying to finish it in the B if I can, but possibly not. We've ended up. I teach the material, and the next week we'll review what we did today, do the next material, and then it really takes C to kind of wrap it up. So we'll probably end up going three sessions, which is okay. I really designed these uh, honors classes, what we're doing, to take almost two months for each one of these videos for the student to settle in and be comfortable. So don't think every two weeks you've got to be able to keep up with me if you're brand new and beginner. I'm trying to challenge the intermediates to where you could... Uh, It'll take you at least a month or two to learn what we're doing here. So keep coming back to the video. Keep coming back to the video. And thank you all for all your support. I'm getting emails from you last week. Where were you, Sheila? Where were you? I'm sorry. So to get back on schedule, next Monday, we'll be doing the next session. And I'll, I'll uh, next couple of days, I'll try to get up what we're going to be doing so you have it ahead of time. Well, thank you guys again. This is... Level one, session 2A. All the base notes you're supposed to know how to read. <laughs> See you next time.